you UPS men. That's what it is. Walking all day, it's like you see him pet your dog, and it's like, do you really want to pet my dog, or do you want to eat my dog's ears? <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer McFresh. I am Jingle the Christmas Clown. And this here is Frank. Looking good. Always got his bow on him. Bow number five. Bow number five. Mambo number five. What's popping, y'all? It's another day. Another Advent. Another dollar. You know, uh, what is it? Another day, no dollars. How about that? Another day, no dollars, but <laughs> money's not important. I can't get it. It's Advent. It's, uh, you know, we're, we're coming in the Christmas season. And I, oh, no. that's not going to fit that way. <laughs> what is this? Advent. So for Advent day number eight or whatever it is, today we have candy cane scented liquid hand soap. And we need that. Have you noticed how um, that terrible uh, soap in the guest bathroom? You don't I like? I can't get it out. You don't like, like my, my soap? Spencer, don't do that. It's soap. It's not hand sanitizer. Oh. Uh, yeah. Don't do that. Well, thank you. This will make a perfect addition to my side of Advent gifts. I'm going to leave all the Advent gifts right here. I think you ate some. I did. The ones I don't eat, I will leave the, there. You didn't even eat the candy from Darth Vader. Wait, this is candy in it? Yeah. No, I was wondering. I'm like, it's a fun little toy. What is it? How do you open it? I don't know. But you see the little hole? He, he, it's, it's just a slide out or something. Okay. I don't I don't know. Sorry. Um. Yeah. What's up, guys? It's Thursday. I'm my favorite day of the week. I'm jiggled the... Maybe you need scissors. Look, there's a plastic cutter in the thing there. So it's don't. You need scissors. Wait, I think I have scissors. You keep talking. All right. I'm Jingle the Christmas Clown, and that is a book by Tommy DePaulo, who is an amazing artist. People know him from Streganona, which is a children's book about um, a kitchen witch, I think. Kitchen witch? Grandma witch. Um, you ain't nothing but a kitchen witch. Yeah. he. We, we lost this wonderful author last uh, March. He died. But... Um, he wrote lots of books. Oh, okay. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> Wait, we, we had these candies before. I think that's when we made a candy. Oh, gingerbread house? Yeah, I remember they're like little balls. Oh, it's a lot. Oh. Little candy balls. Yeah, I see. Candy balls. Candy balls on December 9th. Candy balls on December 9th. Yeah. Awesome. Um, While I do this, is it a holiday today? Yeah, it's... um. It's Weary Willy Day. <laughs> what? Well, you're Gen Z, so you're probably not knowing what that means. No. But Weary Willy was the name of Emmett Kelly. Emmett Kelly's like one of the most famous clowns of, of all time. And it was his character. Okay. And Weary Willy, he created him at a time when the clowns were very happy and joyful. Okay. And, uh brightly colored but it was the depression so he was like that doesn't really reflect what people are feeling yeah so he became the sad face clown oh is that like the, the, the star of the of like the the crying clown yeah tears of the clown and uh, the tattered outfit and so um today is <laughs> shooting up it's weary oh that's pretty fun okay okay it's weary willy What's it like a sweetheart or something? Oh boy. A nerd? I don't know. Weary Willy Day is really clowning day. And um, do you know any clowns? Personally? No. Well, no. Like of. No. Um, yeah, we do. I do. I do. I do. Let's see if you get any. Okay. Uh, how about. Oh, I only know one. Um, Who do you know? Uh, well, it. Yeah. Pen- Pennywise the clown. Pennywise. No, I not. don't like saying him because he really he was just like a shape shifting monster. But yeah, I also hate I I don't like the whole I'm afraid of clowns and clowns are scary and I, I think it's a little played out. Um, what did we say earlier of like? Oh, uh, I, I don't like how I don't like how people. Uh, I'm gonna stop playing with this. Love pizza. You should have never told me there was candy in I'm that. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it, it wasn't love pizza. It was like people hate uh, Brussels sprouts. No fruitcake. Fruitcake, Christmas. People hate fruitcake. Oh, my favorite fruit is pizza. Or my, I love the Beatles. Yeah. You know, things like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, and clowns the same way. Like, right. It's like saying you don't like the word moist. Yes. How do you describe a good cake if you hate the word moist? Exactly. What would you say? 
tell tell the Great British Bake Off that sorry, us audience doesn't like the word oh, moist. I don't like the word moist, yeah. We, we we are big circus lovers, you and I. Yeah. Um, very sadly, Ringham Brothers is not around anymore. Um, sadly for us, if people say they're not sad about it because um, of animal rights, we're for animal rights, but we're also for circuses. They could have been together, but it was just too much money. But anyway, um, so you just got one, and I don't like the one you got. Oh, no, I know I know one, and, and I don't want you to say it if I don't think about it. Okay. Is it like Bozo? Bozo! Bozo very good. Bozo the mother effing clown. I think we had a doll of him. Yeah, that's what I was remembering. Bozo the clown. You don't watch Modern Family. I don't. Um, Cam in the show, uh, he's Fizbo the clown, which I love Modern Family, him. Uh, you are Gen Z, so I don't know if you know Big Comfy Couch. I know Big Comfy Couch, and it's a girl, and she has the red nose. <laughs> is, she con- is she considered a full clown, though? Yeah, she's Lunette the Clown. Mm. It's her name. Um, I actually, my I had a friend um, growing up. Her mom was a clown. Oh, really? Yeah, I think her name was Bubbles. You know Steve-O? You know Steve-O? Yeah, of course. He went to clown college. It was like his, I, he, did, he didn't know what to do, and, and the first thing he did was... I wanted to get... They don't have it anymore. No, really? Well, because it's Ringling Brothers. I It was in Florida. I wanted to go to clown college so bad. Yeah, I should have. Yeah. You know, there's Christian clowns. There's religious. Um, there's. Yeah, I'm serious. Um, and I did see an article that talked about um, like the original court jesters. Uh, yeah. Were actually, uh, reli- you know, religious clowns. But OK, so. Um, I can any- be a clown. Yeah, we we could be the we can be Kirk and Cole clown. clown. How about Kirk fast food? Clown. Can you think of a clown? <laughs> oh, Ronald McDonald. Ronald McDonald. Can you think uh, of The Simpsons? Oh, uh, what's his name? Give me a first letter of it. K. Krusty the clown. Yes. And who else do we have? Oh, again, you're Gen Z, so I don't know if you knew the movie with um Robin Williams, with the doctor. Ah, uh, no. Patch Adams. Never heard of it. You never heard of it? Never even heard of it, no. Oh, well, he's a real person, Patch Adams. Robin Williams played him, and he's a doctor, and he put on the nose, and the, like he would, and yeah. his, and he, he actually, he does a lot of charity work for people who are uninsured. Oh. Yeah, so I- Well, um, it's, and it's probably another one that falls in the lane of ones you don't like, but uh, The Joker. Oh, yeah. That is huh. good. That is good. And um, is that it? We have Insane Clown Posse. Oh yeah, that's that's what isn't that when I said today uh, magnets how do they work? Yeah, that's why I think that's from them. Are you serious? Yeah. How funny. Yeah. Huh. Clowns. They um they've been accused of being Christian. Did you know that? <laughs> Why? Wait, what? I can see that. <laughs> they've been accused of being because they're Christian. supposed to be like. It's know. always good and evil, and there's like a very you, you know defendable argument that they are actually christians and they're evangelizing you know how like we kind of get the bible verse in that you know like you yeah, put the vegetables well, in the cupcakes yeah and the kids will have the fruit and the cake yeah fruit cake <laughs> we trick people into the bible okay it's not bad we don't trick anyone <laughs> <laughs> they are supposedly now they are saying um don't say that hey don't call us christians don't call us christians we're talking about morality and what's good and right but like we don't even what's a church we haven't even gone to a church now you could think like oh okay we can believe them or you could think so the so someone would on. so someone would say if they were trying to trick you with christianity yeah okay i see p yeah so i don't know i see p i see you i don't know but um yeah so it's clowning it no it's weary willy day should have dressed frank up as a clown today a big old clown, the big old clown head. Yeah, I would love to do that, but um, you know, like we said earlier, another day, no dollars. Because <laughs> there is Red Nose Day. Have you heard of that? That's in like May, I believe. I think it's British, but I think they do it here. Actually, I think they do it here in like Walgreens or something. <sighs> you get a like red nose. What's the point of it? It's for children's poverty. Like it's a, it's a fundraiser, but like I remember One Direction all had them. It's kind of sad. Is it like saying because like I imagine a. Uh, a kid who's cold and no, doesn't have home. No, I don't like, know. That is their, true. Their nose gets like red. No, I think it's trying to cheer them up or something. Oh. <laughs> I'm not sure. But all I know is that um, it's Weary Willy Day. They really should rename it Clown Day because the name is not wearing well all these years later. Weary yeah. Willy, he's from the 30s, you know, 40s. So. And he was a sad clown. He was. No, I'm not saying get rid of Emmett Kelly. Maybe we're related to Emmett Kelly. I hope so. 
Kelly. Um, no, I'm not saying it. I'm not saying a different clown, like a happy clown. Although I would like, I think the tides need to turn for clowns, and we mm. do need to celebrate happy, colorful color. Yeah, remember like three? Well, no, it might, might have been more than three years ago, like six years ago, when there was that whole like trend of people dressing up as clowns and like hiding in bushes. So tired. Yeah, it's like get over it. We well, should bring clowns back. Like, why don't clowns go to birthday parties anymore? Yeah, remember I called myself Karen one day, and I said. I'm I'm taking back the name. Like, okay. There can be nice Karens. There can be fun clowns that don't. People are, I have a clown phobia. And, um, I don't want to be mean, but I don't think you do. No, you don't. You know what you have? A follower, a follower mentality. How about that? Yeah. I and, bet there's someone afraid of clowns. I of bet, course, there's I, people afraid of dolphins. And I bet, I bet a lot of things. I bet there's people that genuinely have given Brussels sprouts a time of day and don't like them. Right. But I think there's a lot of people that just say, ah, I don't like clowns and I don't Knee like jerk reaction. Yeah. Oh, I'm afraid of I'm afraid of the dark. Well, but, no, but see, even that has like a reason behind it. Right. It's like I, you can't see. I'm, I'm now I'm just remembering how I wanted to go to clown college. Uh, you know, Do you know there's like the faces? opposite of like what normal people say. <laughs> right. It's like, oh, I should have went to I should have went to law school. No. <laughs> there, Why you know, didn't I go to clown college? <laughs> you know, their faces are. are a trademarked I, yeah trademarked faces you didn't you didn't paint your face no if if, if i was going to do blue on the outside and outline and yeah. i would have to see in the book if anyone had ever done it yeah it's too late they went out of business unless we make a new one croak and croak hey, clown college. Hey, if, if there's enough the four uh, C's. if there's enough you know uh demand for it maybe we'll open our own little clown college yeah called cartier clown college brought to you by croak and crow <laughs> i love it yeah, do you know um, John Wayne Gacy? I don't, like I said, I don't know John why. John Wilkes Booth? John Wayne Gacy. I don't want to bring sad, scary, depressing news into the podcast, but um, that probably also contributed to why people didn't like clowns, and we can't let it end on that. I don't know who he is. He was a mass murderer. Who dressed as a clown? He was Pogo the Clown in his off time, and he was a murderer. I think he hid everybody in his basement in his... Just as long as he... Wait, did he murder people as Pogo the Clown? No. Oh, that's not that bad. Well, no, it's terrible. <laughs> what I'm saying is... <laughs> What I'm saying is uh, for a clown's reputation. Right. Like, but, you know, people kind of put it. I do. Th- I think people put that together. Scary clowns. Like, because you see. You, yeah. You bring like a happy clown to your. What's your, behind yeah, it? Oh, what's behind the makeup? But I mean, what's behind Santa? Yeah. Or just a normal job. You know, like, are, 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 why, why, why aren't. Why now aren't, we're really deep. Yeah. Why aren't we scared of. The UPS oh, man. Oh, <laughs> he's dressed. Yeah. Like UPS man. Because on his on one UPS man on his off time was killing puppies. Right. Always with the puppies. Always with the puppies. You UPS men. That's what it is. Walking all day. It's like you see him pet your dog. And it's like, do you really want to pet my dog? Or do you want to eat my dog's ears? <laughs> so anyway, happy weary willy day. That's enough of that though, guys. Because it's more important than just no weary willy clown day. It is my favorite day of the week. By golly, it's Thursday. And we do one thing here on Thursday. Nice hair, Frank. We yeah, have... Done. What? He got it done. We have a certain segment here called Walk Through Thurs Thray. Walk Through Thursday. That was um, the King James edition. <laughs> uh, roll the intro. Welcome back. Hope you're having fun. Cause Walk Through Wednesday just begun. What's going on? It's your boy. What's my name again? Fresh. Fresh. Spencer Fresh. Spencer Mc, 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 McFresh. McFresh. Spencer McFresh. Spencer McFresh here. It is Walk Through Thursday, the best time of the week. What we do here is we open up the Bible and we pick a verse. <laughs> and with that verse, we uncover the mysteries of life. We do. We do. For free. For free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. And we just, uh, we slow it down and instead of just, you know, trying to memorize Bible verses or trying to get huge overarching ideas of what the book of Revelation means, we say, what does this one sentence, this one paragraph mean? And we, we, we find some personal value. Maybe you'll find some different personal value. It's a, it's a living word. So whatever you get from it, that's not wrong. That's right. Amen to that. But yeah, without further ado, we're going to go through it 
sentence by sentence, line by line, word by word, syllable by syllable, letter by letter. Yeah. P- pixel by pixel. Pixel by pixel if you guys are, are on your uh, electronic devices. Video to audio. Video to audio. And you're going to hear it live and in person. So that's, a, that's all I got. What are we reading today? We do this every week, and every week you act like you don't know that you're the reader. I'll tell you what we're reading. Oh, nice. <laughs> we're reading the Psalm of David. David. As you guys know, David is my favorite person from the Bible who was born as a normal human being. Mm-hmm. I always have to differentiate the fact that. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, Jesus is in the <laughs> Bible and God's in the Bible, but as just a regular human born not immaculately. Um, it were not conceived immaculately, yeah. conceived normally. David's my favorite. Um, so we are going to be reading Psalm 31, 1 through 5. Okay. It's a little bit of a long one, so try to keep up. This is a little title to it. For the director of music, a Psalm of David. Now, I read the Bible in the New International Version, and... Um, it would always, whenever it said that, it would be to the choir master. Oh. Instead of director. I always liked that. Yeah. Every time I read it, I'm like, I kind of wish I had the title of choir master. You can. Oh, Spencer? He's just a choir master. All right. <laughs> We're going to have to run through Thursday if we don't get started. <laughs> All right. In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Turn your ear to me. Come quickly to my rescue. Be my rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. Since you are my rock and my fortress, for the sake of your name, lead and guide me. Keep me free from the trap that is set for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Deliver me, Lord, my faithful God. (laughs) You you got done yourself, David. (laughs) David, you got done yourself. Kind of sounds like a song, even translated. Yeah. Those of you guys remember uh, all, a lot of these, and that's why I like the new uh, versions of the Bible where they give you a little heads up of what it was. Yeah. For, or the title, and so like, this was David. Right. It's like in a way, it's like a prayer, but yeah. it's like written as a song, and so I think it's one of the reasons why like you you'll keep saying, like, "You're my refuge. You're my refuge." Yeah, I was gonna say refuge has to be the word of this psalm. Um, yeah. The key, the buzzword of that. But also I like it because um, it can be used as a mantra, you know, mm. the kind of like. And that's what I'm saying. I feel like a lot of the other verses we've read thus far, at least in the, the past few weeks, mm-hmm. have been stories or pieces about something. Right. And this to me is like a prayer. Like, yeah, this, this is a self mantra prayer that if you wanted something to read to bring yourself comfort, it would be this rather than like. Oh, what does this mean? Yeah. It's like, like, it, this doesn't feel like a Bible study. This feels like a prayer study. Yeah, sometimes you need a, a rest. A, a sometimes re- you need a rest. Day. And that's what we say. Sometimes it's important than just reading words and giving yourself that reassurance, that mantra. When, okay. Oh. oh, no. Sorry. Sorry, Spencer. <laughs> sorry, Spencer. Please. Pl- I always beg you. Please take that out. What? <laughs> I, wasn't ch- I wasn't cutting you off. Oh. Just cut that little piece out. No. As I've done on many other Walkthrough Thursdays, which you can see on our Walkthrough Thursday playlist. Playlist. I jump to the very end and um, I I literally do that with books and stuff like that. I always go to the last page. I'm terrible. But I just wanted to know, do you recognize verse five? Into your hands I commit my spirit. Deliver me, Lord, my faithful God. Well, if you go to Luke 23, 46, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. Oh, no way. His last words on the cross was saying what David had said back in Psalm 31. That's crazy. It is. When I read it, I said, "Um, that's super familiar. Yeah. Yes. That's what I said, too. (laughs) Well, I took you off guard. You're still thinking of um, Bozo Bozo, Bozo with the client. Bozo with the client. All right. So. Super fun that that super fun. Is, Love to see the parallels. Yes, between the old and new. Sometimes people they don't care enough about the Old Testament, and it's like Jesus is yeah. all a continuation of that. Right, you right. Know, it's, it's all it's all one thing. 
And um, obviously a lot of people do care about the Old Testament. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course. Okay, so back up to the top. In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Righteous, righteousness. Righteousness, which you know I hate that word. You hate that word. And you didn't give me a little cheat sheet of what it means again. I don't. I, I, because I'm I just, know, I I'm know. blocking it out. It's like, I can't, I can't deal with it. But, but you, of course we can think of the 23rd Psalm where it says, lead me in the paths of righteousness. Yes. So there it was there. And here it is here. David. Sure. David. David and your Psalms. David and your righteousness. <laughs> All right. Well, so in you, Lord, I have taken refuge. What is refuge? We'll start there safety like shelter shelter thank you yeah so it, it's it's in you lord with, with you i i've taken shelter um and you know just like the psalms it's like that idea of the sheep taking refuge with the right. shepherd and, and it's saying i am using you right. as my shelter you are protecting me right well i'll go in the pen shut the gate I'm yes. now, yeah okay yes let me never be put to shame Take your shame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just uh, g- 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 let me have a, a, a life where I'm, you know, I don't want to say proud, but because I never, that's another word I have a problem with. But um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you, why don't you take that well, one? I don't really know what shame means. Shame, I just think of like Game of Thrones. Let me never be put to shame. Um, I think it just means let me not have regrets in my life let me let me live a life where of honor of honor let me well, yeah be yeah the, op- the opposite of, of shame is honor right yeah okay yeah so let let me have honor because, let me because, not let me never have shame because not for like accolades but more like for the peace you for peace yeah you know you don't you don't have peace if you feel shamed or shameful or whatever yeah you know? okay Whew, those are close ones this is real easy words we're just having <laughs> now here we go deliver me in your righteousness I hate that word. I know. <laughs> righteous. A righteous life. Just the same it's way. Like good, it's good. At the very least, it's good. It's good. All right. And so if, if we're using honor as the opposite of shame, it's mm-hmm. like, let me, you know, never be put to shame. Let me have honor. Deliver me in your righteousness. I think it's still a parallel, but it's also given like you are the most righteous. Right. And, and so let me go forward with that and allow to have honor with myself it's like it's like you know through you i will do yes through you i will do that kind of rhymes a little bit all right now to the next verse turn your ear to me come quickly to my rescue be my rock of refuge i bet i could sing this whole thing it even rhymes turn your ear to me Come quickly to my rescue. Be my rock of refuge. I like it. Rock, rescue and refuge kind of rhyme. Turn your ear to me. I like because I, I'm constantly saying for me to turn my ear to him. Yeah. Um, And so it's a little twist. I like to keep getting my mind refreshed. Turn your ear to me. Come quickly to my rescue. I'm thinking what you just said about the shepherd and the sheep. Yes. You would hear if you if you heard... uh. The sheep crying and you would you wouldn't just like finish your sandwich you would run out there and like what, yeah what's hurting yeah, you are you stuck uh, yeah exactly and I, I don't think it's saying like in a way of like uh turn your ear to me like it's it's, it's not it, it's just like what you said like it's uh, is it like well is that not what a prayer is like lord hear my prayer yeah you're turn right your ear to me is the same as lord hear my prayer right and um so yeah that's what it's saying it's well, yeah like you said the shepherd it's hear me um, come quickly to my rescue once again. It's, 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 so it's like literally, Lord, hear my prayer once again. Call back to the first verse, be my rock of refuge. And a rock is big. It doesn't move. Right. It's sturdy. You're it's right. It's stable. You're right. You know, when when there's a, a tornado coming, you give me a big old rock to hold on to. Yeah. And I probably won't fly away. Right. <laughs> this is a big, <laughs> unless it's a small rock. It pulls me with it. Oh, wait, there was one more. A strong oh. fortress to save me. That was part of that. I say, be my rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. Well, you just, you had explained. Yeah, um, so it's the so same idea, and it's like a fortress to so save. So it's even, it's even better than what I was saying as an open pen with a wooden fence. Yes. It's like a stone fort. Yes, mm-hmm. and it's like nothing can get in when, when you shut those doors to save me. Number three. <laughs> Since you are my rock and my fortress, 
for the sake of your name, lead and guide me. Okay, so now we're saying, he's saying, so what we just established, big fortress that you're protecting me. And since you are that, for the sake of your name, lead, like it's once again, I am, you are a, you are protecting me. You are doing this all for me. And so now through you, let me go live a life for you in a way. Right, right, right. It's like, and for the sake of your name, lead and guide me. It's like, now let me go forward for your purpose. Right. Your, 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 what you want for right. me. Like you tell me what to do now. Cause you, I, I, I've, I've submitted myself to your protection right. in, in a way. And now it's like, now let me go out, you know? Right. It's like, uh, like I'm, I think of a knight or something. You, know, you you go into the castle and the king saves you. And it's like, yeah, my allegiance is with you. Right. Something like that. Yeah. Um, and again, I'm brought back to the 23rd Psalm. And not because I love it so, but because there's a huge parallel here. Well, I mean, you have to imagine this is only eight Psalms after that. Yeah, it is um, dot, dot, dot. You just said, oh, for the sake of your name. Um, and in the 23rd Psalm, he says... For your he name's guides sake. me in the paths of righteousness for, for his name's for sake. his name's sake, and um, I believe you said something else. He leads and guides me, right? In yeah. the psalm we're reading, and in the twenty third psalm, he leads me beside still waters. He guides me in the paths of righteousness. So, so you see, a lot David of, is staying on brand. Yeah, yo, <laughs> David, he's not no flip flopper. He knows what he's talking about. I recommend everyone get to know David. <clears throat> Keep me free from the trap that is set for me, for you are my refuge. So refuge is a really important word in this. Yes. It's a refuge podcast. It's a refuge podcast. For you are my refuge. He just keeps repeating it. Um, he keeps repeating it as a fact, but then also what you just said. He keeps asking for it to continue in that way, you know? Yes. And it's also a song. So songs repeat. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Like, but not uh, all the psalms. Like hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it's a not great... all the psalms are songs. Oh, that's why it says choir master. Yeah. Okay. Maybe unless psalm means song. Loose facts. I don't know. Um, Loose facts. Okay, so what this one reminded me of is the new, the the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father. Yes. How the Pope Francis said to say it a little differently. He said instead of saying. Lead me not into temptation. It's allow me not to fall into temptation. Right. Or, uh, yeah, um, allow or let us let me not, let, fall, let me in, not fall into temptation. Into temptation. Saying that God would never lead you in temptation, but you want to instead ask for him to not allow you to your for yourself. The temptations to fall. are out there. Yes. Can you help me not fall into it? He's not leading you into it. So do you see a parallel on um, five? Uh, yeah. Four. Four. Yeah. Keep me free from the trap that is set for me. But God for, didn't set it. Yeah, for you are my refuge. So yeah, so he's you know, P Boy Friend should have just brought up Psalm thirty one verse four, right? And been like, those traps are set for you in life, and we're we're meant to be asking God not to let me do it, but to allow me to avoid yes. falling into. Yes. Give me the, the give me the, give me that option, one, the possibility. Once again, yeah, I think we we explained it before is like, um, we always talk about God as like a, or Jesus and god as a sherpa to the mountain that they created mm -hmm. and it's like that's what we said you can go up the mountain without it but one still it'll always be the mountain they created and right. if you go up the path without him then and it works it's like you technically were go you were still following the same path he set before you and finally you were asking you know the mountain right you're, you're like i'm asking you to allow me not to fall into a pit of ice and it's like Show me, show me the way. Show me a way around show, this. Show me the way, uh, way around it. Yeah. It's like, I don't know this mountain. You know this mountain. Keep me free from the traps that are set before me. Yeah. And finally, into your hands, I commit my spirit. Deliver me, Lord, my faithful God. Must have been important. Must have been important. Jesus ends up repeating it. And one of the last <laughs> things he said um, as a full human, because um, he comes back. Yeah. And says a yeah. few more things. He does. <laughs> But yeah, no, that's actually a cool parallel. I'm glad you, you figured that out. But um, into your hands, I commit my spirit. You know, once again, it's like, I am yours. Yeah. Um, you've created me. Deliver me, Lord, my faithful God. 
And, and I like it because um, knowing Luke 23, 46, it's Jesus's last words as a man on earth. And so it's sort of like a death statement, take my spirit. But David's still living when he said it. Yeah. So we can say it, take my spirit as I'm living here. Like, you know. Yeah. And just finally, the last two words I, I like, you know, it's, a world, it's about faith. I mean, you have faith in God. You have to be faithful. This is saying my faithful God. You know, it, it, it's, it's, there's a couple of things here where it switches it. And it's like, God is e- is equal, if not more faithful to us than we are to him. So it's like this faithful God that you're yeah. always there for me. Right. That's what you're saying. It's like being faithful is you're always there. It's like right. even when we will lack in faith, God is always faithful. And that's that, guys. That's that for Psalm 31, 1 to 5. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you uh, hope you got something out of it. Maybe you got something out of it that we didn't. And uh, put that down in the comments down below. And then write it all out and then delete it because we'll never read it. Spencer, that's not true. <laughs> I'm kidding. We read every comment and we're very happy when anyone comments. But um, we'll be back tomorrow for Fun Friday. Until then, go out. Go um, eat some candy. Peace. Oh, <laughs>